Hello, hello, everybody. What's going on? Welcome to episode 179 of the Leon Legree podcast. Your host, as always, Leon. And finally, we're back and getting back into what I do best is making awesome recordings of what's going on in technology, what's going on in the world, what's been going on in the social um, ecosystem of the web, the, the hardware, the software, and what's going on in the world. And by the way, I appreciate every single one of you taking the time to listen to um, the Leon the Great podcast, I, myself. Hey, 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 before we begin on today's episode, I want to go ahead and get you started on today's sponsors. I like to go ahead and begin uh, with the sponsor that I've been around, I've been using for now a couple years now, Scooch Case. And if you don't know what Scooch Case, I've talked uh, great lengths about Scooch in the past and why I love using their cases. And the um, previous one that I've had before was a clear case, lie in your pocket, and something that I can use all the time and something that I can just use uh, on a daily basis. So if you love um, uh, yeah, a phone protector or if you have a brand new phone or trying to look for a good phone protector or, an, or a screen case, I would recommend going over to Scooch Case and Fortress Up. Both are great. Uh, something that I would recommend to anybody to try and check out uh, Scooch. Uh, look up over on the uh, phone models of your choice. Something that you currently have, which I know that right now they carry cases from iPhone 13, 12, 11, and, and many other Android models that they have right there, including Samsung Galaxy's model including the S22. So go over, check out Scooch Case and Fortress Up. So that way uh, um, that way you can go ahead and purchase a, a case and screen protector to protect yourself too. And pl plus, please go ahead and mention that I have sent you. <laughs> then next on the list of sponsorship I have is no other than Zenny, and I'm sure that for those uh, returning listeners that are coming back and listening to me for the thousand time about Zenny Optical, and which I've said before, I've said I will say it again: Zenny uh, anti uh, blue light glasses is something. It, it doesn't matter what you do, uh, mobile, um, desktop gaming, uh, work, whatever you're doing. Zenny provides great glasses because, for one, I've worn Zenny's for a long time. And I will definitely recommend all my viewers to do the same. Go out and protect your eyes. And if you're right now someone in your 20s or your 30s and doesn't have bad vision problems like I do, I would go ahead, get yourself some Zen Zenny's because... Um, I'm sure many of you know that ha having to look into uh, blue lights going to your phone or your desktop causes um, tons of eye problems down the road. And blue light is not the best thing for your eyes uh, long term. And the fact that you'll be affected with um, blue lights, especially if you're on your iPad or iPhone or whatever your device is your device you got going on it is not good um for your eyes and i always say say to people is go ahead check up some zennies i'm sure at this point uh at this point already uh they already had an april cell that that just happened or an easter cell that just passed so if you guys want to i'll have the sales the Zenny optical cells down on the description below so you guys can go out and check up what uh, what sales you can get for zennies.com so my goodness so it is time that I get back into the podcasting game and I figured this it has to be a very good time to 
get back into it. I mean, right now, a lot has been happening, has been happening in the tech um, sphere, and just so much that I definitely missed out. I really have to say, I I don't keep up with so much of what's been happening in the last um, in, in the last few weeks because of for one, uh, my job has been. Uh, uh, preventing me to make another podcast so at this point i figured i'd do this right now make a recording uh make do all this kind of fun stuff and get it out of the way too because so much on my mind and i figured let's um get this recording out of the way because otherwise i won't get that kind of chance to um do recordings like this again and then also one of my relatives, my uh, mom, she's going to be coming to visit within um, um, within tomorrow. So tomorrow and then the next five days, she's going to come over and stay uh, over uh, over at here in, in our place. Because for one, um, she's uh, taking a couple of her things and moving all, the, all her things back to South Florida where she's currently living. Which um, that's something that she's um, doing right now, and I'm, I myself just definitely gonna um, take the time and hopefully try to breathe on easily while I am. Uh, how could I put it this way? While I'm out uh, with uh, with my mom, since I haven't seen her within the past two months, which um, it'll be a good thing to. Uh, get away and spend some time with uh with of course relatives and all that you know and it's good it's good to see a family once in a while which i definitely needed to but yeah and so guys uh so before we get into today's topic uh i want to let you guys know that um with um once i am done with family matters which hopefully um with once I'm done pretty much with uh, family uh, situations and and my mom's visit over here, I will definitely do, um, get something nicely prepared for episode uh, 180 coming up down the future. So just remember, if you want to follow up on the latest episodes of the Leon the Great podcast, uh, please be sure to follow, subscribe, whatever you do. Seriously, whatever you do follow and so that way you you don't miss another episode and honestly though w- there is a lot a uh, lot to say too and to me i wanted to definitely start off with something i think a lot of people have talked about uh, especially the um the twitter takeover uh what elon musk um it's been pretty much talked about since last yeah i would say about last week which that's been a big talk last week and it still continues to be a big talk now because of what's been happening. I think, and to say, and to say of what's been happening, uh, that Elon Musk buying Twitter, it's definitely a big, big um, uh, news, and why I think a lot of people wants uh wants to go over this because for one, he is a billionaire that want he wants to take over and and whatever he does, I who knows how this is going to affect the platform. And again, uh, do I do I take everything that he does seriously? No, I don't think so. And for one, it is it is definitely a play on words, which that's all what Elon Musk is trying to uh, do in, in order to attempt to take over Twitter. Now, e- even though, yes, I will say that he does definitely have the money to, in the probably the capital to buy it to, but... I'm sure that um, having to cooperate with pretty much the um, boards of directors and what's um, what's going on behind the scenes on Twitter, which I think it would be very tough. But from what I understand, uh, Elon Musk wants to privatize Twitter, which um, I don't know how that's going to go. But if he ever um, succeeds on that I think that it would be very interesting where that's going to go and how um, things are going to shift because I know um, Twitter in the last few years, it's just been very unfriendly. And what Twitter 
um, with the whole Twitter and Elon Musk situation has come about the last few days, I think it's been really interesting, but it's definitely has shocked definitely the whole the whole web and the world um, to find out that he is doing this big move. And to say where where this is going with um, with Elon Musk doing this, it is absolutely uh, genius. Uh, but we don't know how his influence is going to be if he ever does a takeover of uh, on Twitter. And this is basically uh, we're end up reliant on a freaking billionaire to um, to have uh, pretty much new rules and, and control of what Twitter is going to do. And honestly, if he does make some good changes on the platform, I mean, good on him. But she's. You know, I don't know um, what I can put it this way. You know, if he does what he does, I mean, that will be good. But at the same time, um, I'm not even sure if that's a very good move. Because uh, if he buys on Twitter, does he does the new management on Twitter and him and the new management on Twitter is going to have uh, full control? I'm not I'm sure he won't be able to. Because let's put it this way, there, I mean, this is a huge deal, and um, and someone has pointed out with um the last couple of days or last, last several days after so many content creators have talked about the uh, the news. In fact, my opinion is this, uh, is just that for one, Twitter last few years has been a mess with um what's been happening, uh, what's been happening right there, and. And to me, there's, I think, who knows, it could be a big positive or it could be a uh, big net uh, negative um, if this ever uh, succeeds. Uh, who knows? Probably, it'll probably be likely, but my my guessment is that it will end up being less likely. Because, I mean, first of all, for what I understand, what, he, um, what Elon Musk is doing is strategic, but I don't think he's playing the game right you know where why i say he's not playing the game right because i don't know if he'll ever succeed into um taking over twitter because this is absolutely it's absolutely funny where this is gonna go so and um not only that and if this successfully does come true and if he is able to attempt to buy twitter for one, I mean, hell, go for it if you want, you know. But I, to me, am I a fan of Twitter on hundred percent? Absolutely not. And I don't like where, um, with Twitter, you're not getting the certain amount of reach, and the whole um shadow banning on Twitter has, for I mean, for creators that have that have gone big already, it's not um something that. A lot of people are a fan of. I'm not a fan of the whole shadow banning. They've they've started doing that. I think ever since after 2016, 2017, between that time frame, they've started doing that early on. But the right now, Twitter has, um, of course, have gone to that step where it's now becoming shout ba- banning heavily to small and big creators right now. That. Um, it's just makes this very, this at most very situation unfriendly to be around. It's it's a terrible situation, but look at it this way: if if he ever ends up buying it, like he says he would, I mean, this is gonna be big. Like it's like Jeff Bezos uh, making it was. It's like someone that said um, on, back on a video where someone pointed out that. Uh, Jeff Bezos purchased a big newspaper, I believe the Washington Post, um, like something billion dollars, which that was a big deal back then. And of course, you see millionaires buying the, buying um, uh, football uh, teams, which that it's not also making the team money, but it's making these billionaires more money. You know, if you buy a team or certain certain team for sure, but. That is huge. Where we, you have someone that is worth a lot of money buying a social media company. So that said, 
I'm not sure I will ever want to put my trust on someone that is going to um, try to take over and do what they are going to do. You know, it's hard to, it's hard for me to say, you know, it, a lot of different outlooks, a lot of different perspectives of what uh, it's going on with the whole scene with, uh, with the whole Elon Musk and Twitter takeover uh, that's going to go. And I honestly, though, I haven't seen too many, uh, um, uh, interviews with Elon Musk. I'm not very familiar with the guy's work, except for Tesla, um, Nero, um, SpaceX, and then Neuralink, where he's pretty much involved with every single aspect. Which right now it's become a very big, um, it's a very big project projects for for this one individual right there too, and I'm not sure how he's able to handle all that too. And I think I. I already told um, everybody about this too, like the, um, just to get a little bit off topic here. But I know um, that I myself, for those that are listening for the first time, may know that I've rode a Tesla, and from last year I rode uh, a Tesla for the first time. I filmed it and I put it up on YouTube. Honestly, one of the best. Uh, <laughs> the um, best experience riding a Tesla and nowadays I go back to my friend's uh, place and and I ride his Tesla back and forth uh, to visit over to his place I think it's super I I like the Tesla and think I think it is very comfortable in the model my friend has is a uh, model s it's a very incredible car I love the design on it he got the metallic blue uh car and so that was his color of choice uh even though the color adds adds up but that's his favorite color and this is something that he's definitely going to cherish for the rest of his life you know and that's something that's not a purchase you can just get get off right off the whim and that's this is a very big and serious purchase that you have to um, uh, be careful and how you plan your purchases right there too. Because um, I know that with Tesla, uh, you have an option of the slow charge or the uh, or the medium char- supercharger that you can have a technician come and install it right into your garage, which is, um, which is a very big, and also expensive purchase. You got to remember that as well. So you can't just go and spend a Tesla car out of the whim. And I will say that that the more I ride it and the more I learn about the Tesla and all its features, it is a very attractive car, which to me, that'll be an investment that I like to put down on the road and something I'll be, hap- I'll be happy as well. Because for one, you're not um, spending a lot of gas, which... There's something, uh, or actually, not a lot of gas. Excuse me. Now you're not even spending a single penny on um, gas. Which, if you look at the prices of gas, it has gone up a lot too. And I think if you are considering on getting a Tesla, even though yes, pretty expensive right now, but that will save you a lot uh, down the road if you um, invest in, I don't know, Tesla. And that will be a car that will last you a very long time. In my opinion, I think I'll be a, one of those cars in the future that, I mean, heck, I have coworkers now that uh, talks about uh, Teslas. I, And, you know, that's one thing about uh, Teslas is you're also making a investment of a lifetime. And then now where I'm thinking about it now, I do like to put an investment on a uh, Tesla down the road because I myself find Tesla's very attractive and that's something I will love to put down uh, for me if I ever put have enough to afford one down the down the future down the road. So back where I wanted to say for me um, the developments of the Twitter ticker over it's going to be something that it, even if he do, does this I don't I myself personally think that this is definitely a show. I don't think he'll end up becoming very serious. Um, again, it's some, even though he 
uh, Elon Musk admits that uh, the policies of Twitter has just gone worse and something that they are not open for free dialogue or free speech, which honestly, I myself agree with his statement because it's not a free speech platform, you know, and it's definitely taking in, uh, it's been eaten alive by people from the inside, especially with uh, bad uh uh, bad people running the show, which if that ever hap- if that ever happens, and let's say if uh, Musk does become very serious of buying Twitter and changing the way uh, Twitter is going to end up becoming, um, if he ever seriously buys it, I think it may end up becoming a good thing. If um, if so serious about that too, and then plus here's the thing too, I wouldn't stay and focus on uh, Twitter. Because if it was anyone, I would say uh, continue to reach out to other platforms which still and uh, still widely supports free, free speech. In fact, you can go and look up websites like minds.com, uh, M-I-N-D-S dot com, which you can, guys can go ahead and look up minds.com. Um, and I know there is another website that has that does the same thing similar that uh, similar to Instagram called uh, Pex uh, Mo P X L M O, which I'll have the links down below in the description. So anybody can look up uh, the Insta- Instagram uh, clone, the Instagram killer app, which I will definitely put it down there so you, anyone can uh, look it up yourselves. And yeah, there's so many alternatives, which I think it is great. And because honestly, we definitely need good, valuable um, alternatives for the web. Because this is something that is definitely changing, especially with uh, Web 3.0. But I don't seriously find this news, especially uh, with the whole take Twitter takeover, to be absolutely serious. And even if he does, he still has to listen to um, the to the executives and the board. So to me, uh, he still has he still is going to be chained to people like the executives that are still in charge. So again, uh, that's just my opinion. But however, um, you guys can develop your own opinion about it. what is your take on it, because honestly. Um, the web is just becoming, um, very crazy and also just crazy in general, but it very, to- uh, toxicating even for our minds. So, and I don't like where social media has, uh, developed, and especially with the world Twitter, because at some point you definitely have to, um, shut off, uh, Twitter. And I've done this before twice in my life and you need to not focus on the social medias right there because I think social media uh, can be put to some good but also um, it can also lead into a lot of mental um, mental harm for your mental health which I it's um, it's um, a thing that a lot a lot of young people that goes into Twitter are pretty much I don't know. They they are not well, and a lot of people are focused on it too. And what's the word I'm trying to bring? Oh man, it's it was right on top of my head. Like social media addiction. There we go. And they those you got a lot of young teens that are um, hooked on their phones and don't care to socialize uh, between people to people. While I get the um, other side of social media, but. You got the worst of social media on it as well, which I don't like where it it's developed. And you have also Facebook and Twitter seems to be the bo- uh, best of worst worlds, uh, <laughs> the best of the worst to be around. So, again, don't take it from me. That's just the opinion I have. So, yeah. And that being said, we're going to jump right into and for those, next topic, um, which... This is actually my don't one know. of my favorites, and I think well, everybody, I'm sure that everybody that has should know brave, what should heck listen to Brave this. is about. And I've talked about Brave so many times on um, on the introductions on my shows a lot, and I think 
Everybody should have know, know about Brave. If you don't know what Brave is about, please click down the affiliate, affiliate link down below on the description of this podcast. So, guys, so you can go ahead and check out Brave yourself and get away from all these Google monopolies like um, uh, uh, like uh, Firefox or Google Chrome, for instance. And this is a good uh, topic I wanted to go over, which... Um, this is pretty much a topic that's been written by David Price, and uh, which in this article which says, "Brave is bypassing Google AMP pages because they're harmful to users." So, and this is another story I've um discovered on the verge, and I've I myself I use uh, I do use Google's accelerated mobile pages framework, and I don't even. Um, I will say that even I myself does, um, I almost find that with Google, if you add Google on, um, your blog, for instance, if you have a WordPress, I don't see the speed improving if you, if you have Google or the AMP pages where, um, and this actually, and if you guys want to know what AMP is, well, you're in a, you're in for a treat. So and this one, this article, which says uh, Brave announced a new feature for its browser on Tuesday, DAMP, uh, which automatically jumps past any page rendered with Google's uh, accelerated mobile pages framework and instead takes users straight to the original website where possible DAMP will rewrite links and URLs to prevent users from visiting AMP pages altogether. Brave said in a blog, post and in case where where that is not possible brave will watch as pages are being fetched and redirected users away from amp pages before the page is even rendered preventing amp slash google code from being loaded and executed brave um, deframe the amp as a privacy feature and didn't mince words about its stance uh, toward Google's version of the web. In practice, AMP is harmful to users and to the web at large. Brave's uh, blog post said, before explaining that AMP gives Google even more knowledge of users' browsing habits, confuses users, and can often be slower than normal web pages. And it warned that next version of AMP, so far just called AMP 2.0, will uh, be even worse and so I will actually um, agree with this because let me just stop right here and say that if you added Google or any code uh, brought to you by Google you know that it's not um, it's not even safe to have Google right um, embedded right into your website with the massive amount of tracking that it does. And I will say that if um, executed pretty well with Brave and blocking or de-amping uh, Google's code uh, by visiting to through different websites, I think it's best because, you know, Brave, yeah, Brave's mission about privacy, it's looking to be pretty good. And I may have talked to and criticized about Brave where they've had a leak on it, but I'm sure that's been months now. And I look at um, like web browsers like Brave doing something to make it privacy focused, which is great. In many ways, I do see that is a wonderful, wonderful thing to de Google fi or de amp Google's code, so that way it's not. Uh, constantly tracking your um, your movement, right, or your view web page viewing, which I think is great. Uh, that Brave is doing something right there too, because honestly, we're in a very privacy um, tethered world. Uh, because right now, I mean, I myself have been more privacy conscious. If I I don't know if I, it's the right word to put it. Privacy conscious, yes, and I've 
been pretty much putting a lot of focus where which websites you visit and just got to be careful where you visit because, um, I mean, most of the time you don't know if these websites are embedded with Google code. I'm sure that almost pretty much 95% they are, but <laughs> you got to look at it this way. I mean, do you trust anything that's out there on the web? I'll sure tell you that not a lot of people do, but uh, the code, the codes in most of these blogs are embedded. They, I mean, you damn well, <laughs> you damn well be that these codes are already there in many of these websites. Because for one, I will tell you that they've had to embed a code or Google code for one to track uh, analytics and who's visiting the websites. That's the reason why people still rely on Google's code for anything for anything else really. And that's that's one reason. Um and I will continue on which in here in the Verge article, Brave's stance is a particular strong one. But the tide has turned hard against AMP. Over the last couple of years, Google originally created the framework in order to supply, sp uh, simplify and speed up the uh, mobile websites. And AMP is now managed by a group of open source contributors and was controversial from the very beginning and smelled to some like Google trying to uh, exert even more control over the web. Over time, more companies and users grew concerned about that control and chapped at the idea that Google will prioritize AMP pages in search results. Plus, the rest of the internet eventually figured out how to make good mobile sites, which made AMP and similar projects like Facebook instant articles less important. A number of popular apps and browser extensions make it easy for users to skip over AMP pages in a recent in a recent years. Publishers, including The Verge, parent company Vox Media, have moved away from using it altogether. <laughs> uh, AMP has ev even become part of the antitrust fight against Google. A lawsuit alleged that AMP uh, helped uh, centralize Google's power, power as an ad exchange and that Google made non-app uh, ads load slower. Well, that's really good. And honestly, though, I've... Definitely love the stance what Brave is doing. I think uh, what Brave, there that they've they've done right there is really you look at it this way. I mean, we all have to go out and start looking to look for a reason to go and stop using services like Google and like YouTube. And I'll tell you that I will tell you right now that I'm not a fan where where google's going with this i mean do i go out and start using google on a daily basis no i don't i, I absolutely don't even though they have strong search results the search results can be also manipulated too something that i'd be very very careful um doing as of right now because the fact is that if you know that they're digging into into your privacy right in the background. If it's like the saying goes that if you know something stinks, it really stinks of uh, uh, of something that is rotten to the core, and you know that using your products is something that is really horrible and stri and, and drenched into a very bad bad smell because I don't trust something that someone will dig from all the data that you've been going through over the years and, and that tells you what are they going to use with that data in the first place and it doesn't it doesn't seem that Google will ever change at all and that's one thing I think um, you see browsers it's not just Brave I'm sure that other browsers are definitely um, you got other, so many developers that are changing the code from like I know Brave isn't the only one because I know Brave is still based on Chromium and, and bro, even that I'm not even 100% sure I would trust 
um, 100% trust uh, Brave because it's still built via the Chromium, and you don't know if Brave will end up. Uh, who knows? If let's say if uh, the Brave browser were to change within the next five years, and then later on it ends up becoming less uh, privacy focused, and I'm sure it may not, right? But let's say if some some heads were to turn, uh, turn against the other cheek, and they will start to change. Do you think that they're ever gonna keep their promises? I don't. I bet not. But right now, I see that they are doing just well. And hey, and I will say that back then, I was a big Firefox guy, from Firefox to Chrome. Then later on, I left Chrome and decided to switch on to another browser like Opera, which honestly, Opera isn't too bad of a browser. I definitely recommend the Opera uh, in some use cases. But again, um, it's not like a privacy-focused browser, but there are so many out there that you can just use. Um, and I think there's another browser that starts with a V, but again, doesn't come to mind right now what the name of the browser. But if I find it, I will put the link down below so you guys can uh, look it up and see uh, what you guys think about some alternative browsers that you guys can go out and look up for yourself. So, hey, that will be a pretty good idea for those that care to um, or care or to look into using something a little bit different other than Google, Firefox, or Microsoft's uh, Edge, which I think would be a lot better, really. <clears throat> and to find out more about the AMP story, I'll post the links down for The Verge and and the other blog posts from Brave down in the description, which I recommend uh, all my listeners to read um, the, Brave, the Brave blog because um, even... Even that, it even tells you by detail why it's actually very bad for, uh, and harming users' um, user control and autonomy, which that is one thing I would definitely recommend uh, um, anyone to go and try, try out reading. And also, uh, you guys can go and look up uh, other privacy tools to even protect your data and what things you can do to protect yourself down down the line, which I totally recommend anyone doing that. If you're into protecting your privacy, uh, that's one of the first browsers I would do, use is Brave because it it is um it works well. It's it's not a very big memory hog like from what I've used previously, like uh, Mozilla Firefox, which tends to be a very much a CPU hog, which don't recommend using that at all. But if you have other alternatives, go for what I've just said and use use Brave or other alternative browsers like Pay, Pale Moon or uh, Valencia or something like that too. So anyways, I'll have the um, links down in the description so that way you can try out different browsers of your choice. And alternative browsers, by the way, too. All right, everybody. So... The last topic I want to talk about is inflation and especially on price on the prices, which I think um, um, where we are at right now in the current moment, I do think that um, the way things are going as far as um, uh, food and things are and things are going on here in the economy, it's definitely affecting everyone. And this is not just a problem in the United States. I do think it's a problem, a huge problem everywhere else as well in Europe, Asia, and many, many more. That this will end up lasting all the way till next year. And I know that this is not what we're, we wanted to see, but this is where we are. And my God, I mean, the last time I've been through um, grocery shopping... This was very recently, um, and I cannot believe for 19 items, I've spent about like uh, 40, uh, $40.21 on 
just 19 items alone. And man, and unholy holy crap, we're going to we're going to continue to get into a big world hurt and a lot more coming up right there because this is where the loss of confidence is definitely going to hit hard especially and you look at where we are at and the economy and a lot of people are saying that well and our economy with the Biden administration everything's gonna be all right when in reality it's really much bullshit that's spewing out the mouths of um central bankers and basically people running the show and you've got to look at the bigger picture and you got to see that we've are this is just a start right of pretty much of a of a brand new crash and i remember a long time ago that when back when i was pretty much at towards the port point that when i was in my senior year of high school and that was pretty much late of 2008 eight through late uh 2008 through 2009 where the great Re- recession happened and i remember where well that there's there was people that lost their jobs and there was people that did kept kept their jobs so and 2008 the recession was pro- uh, it was over a decade ago and i something i remember right and and that's one night when i hear about inflation price hikes and sure did the prices go up um it did and it was pretty bad bad back then but i know that the worst will come for um for sure and if you are not prepared for the next crash my my god this is something um a lot of people should expect and should start stacking up because you are gonna get into a lot of hurting and i mean a lot of people will be fucked up by next year <clears throat> and when i say that is for one if you think the money you're, you're going to use for spending and will last for a long time especially the um, purchasing power that's going on right now and even recently when i when I've opened up um, Instacart, especially how things are going, especially with um, fuel surge, fuel surge tar- charges uh, between forty to fifty-five cents. See, that's another addition to all the hikes, and you know that's where I mean, if you look at the the surge charges, I think there was customers that actually demanded to have surge charges add it right there and this is one of the worst thing i could see having fuel search charges added and this is not a good thing and if you think that search charges uh does any good i think you're wrong i think you're definitely hurting it's not the services but you're definitely hurting the consumer long term and i'll tell you why because um the consumer at the end of the day are definitely are taking a hit when they pay extra on delivery fees and the food that they and also just delivery fees the the taxes um many unnecessary surge charges that that's placed right there um unless if you have membership but why do you want to spend monthly right there unless if you use a service often like for instacart for 99 cents and i'm sure that for anyone that's listening internationally what the hell the hell is Instacart. Um, basically, it's grocery shopping coming right to your doorstep without having to physically go out and get groceries out for yourself. And it's terrible because you you are spending so much. And I myself, I'm sure I've used a Instacart. And the last time I've used Instacart was two about two weeks ago. Um, and I remember just seeing the how awful the price prices i have not seen the prices this bad it's really uh astronomically awful and if you look at it right there too it's how on earth the average person can continue to afford and spend 
that kind of price is really bizarre <laughs> that, to the point that how can any average person can just um, not look at it and continue to spend and spend and not realize that all that money uh, is going away. Which, which, by the way, if I understood correctly too, in fact, um, even a lot of the people, especially the central banks, are saying that now uh, that the, all this the rise of inflation will continue up all the way through next year of 2023. Uh, no surprise right there, because all the problems that the government will do is not won't it won't do diddly squat. It's definitely hurting. Um, people of the lower class and continues to continue to hurt people that are basically the work working class like uh, I myself so no surprise where this is gonna go mm, and people are that are buying stuff like let's say uber eats uh, doordash grubhub whatever services you got going on I'm sure by the if you if you look at the previews in um, the the previews of what you're looking over, you see your the delivery fees and the gas um surge fees. I what I can tell you with what I'm against is that you're definitely hurting the purchasing power of consumers, because by the time when you put temporary um gas service charges fees, uh, that will never go away. My opinion that's can. That's going to continue, continue on unless if you, if, unless if you buy those things and let it, let these things spur up and, because I honestly see, when people say temporary, it's more permanent, <laughs> and hear me out when I say that, because whenever you have companies that slap temporary fees, do you even think that? Many of those uh, temporary fees will end up staying temporary. I don't think so. And where there on the there are obviously a lot of people are gonna end up accepting this because a lot of people don't give a shit on how much people spend for food and groceries because that will end up continue. That's gonna continue on and on forever. And note that, hey, I don't like where especially the world is going and the price of food and everything else that's that's going up high and i'm look and i didn't even find out about this i didn't find all about this since yesterday i mean i've been keeping up with uh the econ with the prices and the inflation especially um the way things are going and you look at things like the nasdaq the dow jones um and then the S and P five hundred. You think that the the stock market looks even healthy? Not really. Not certainly not. The, uh, I mean, we are definitely at one of the most weakest weakest points of our, our of our lifetime right now, especially with the surge of inflation and the 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 amounts of money being printed. Every single day, and I'm sure by the time of this recording, the time of this recording, it'll be like over 31 trillion dollars. And ho holy cow, I don't even remember. And I'm going over, and oh shoot, no, uh, it's actually still 30 trillion dollars, uh, 395 billion, yeah, at this point. So, yeah, actually. I'm actually very wrong about this too. So it's actually still thirty trillion dollars, but by the time that next year comes, it'll climb up to thirty-one trillion dollars, as we all know it, right there. <laughs> and the way things are going in America, it's def, it's definitely going in the wrong track. <laughs> Definitely in the wrong track of things, so not liking it all one bit. It it's very terrible what, that we're going through this here in America. So yeah, <laughs> it's pretty goddamn awful. So, but yeah. So just to end it right there, even on a sad note of this episode, which I would say for those 
that are working. And if you are working, I would say be prepared for the worst. And that way you'll stay safe uh, throughout the uh, throughout hard times. So right there, I am definitely putting my energy, my time and energy into putting my money where it is actually going. And I do want to see that um, uh, go somewhere where I can protect myself. In fact, I definitely encourage anyone to purchase uh, crypto or any hard assets, which would be very good down the line. Hey, not financial advice. You could take it or leave it. For what I'm saying is please be prepared and uh, keep yourselves safe with everything happening because, uh, for instance, it's not just the food and groceries, but the electronics are definitely going to continue to skyrocket. And I would mention right here and probably last thing right in this session is um, with the way it's going, you don't know if if the price of electronics are going to continue to skyrocket. And the fact, it's not just the food, like I've said. Electronics will be a big indicator, and you guys would not be able to afford um, the new um, the new expensive flat screen TV. In fact, um, that that price of a flat screen will, uh, will increase down the line, and especially with new products coming in. Um, that's not something that uh, everybody is going to be able to um, take a bullet for inflation because who's going to take the bullet for inflation when you're not be you're not going to be able to heal uh, throughout a open wound where that wound it's going to continue to get worse and who's going to um, take a bullet for the increase of pricing which that's something we all are we all have to pay close attention to something that we cannot dismiss what is happening will become a very real thing down the line so be careful what you wish for because honestly especially the times that i've been ordering especially from doordash uh, uh grubhub all these other services I've used in the past will something I will be minimizing myself less on this and something I will not be using services like that. And moving forward, I mean, this is where we're definitely heading if we don't pay enough attention to it too. So, all right, guys, this is, is episode 179 of the Leon the Great podcast. And my goodness, uh, it's been a good um, a moment since we've since I've went and and put a recording down. Happy that I did it, and very glad that I put the time to record um, fifty plus minutes of recording. Didn't have to do all that, but I did it. Also, for you guys that have listened and stuck around and stick through about almost an hour of the podcast, thank you so much truly appreciate every one of you listeners taking the time to listen uh, be, please be sure to follow me at the, your your music services or your podcast uh, platform of your choice so remember to check me out follow me over there thank you again for taking the time to listen to the Leon LeGray podcast your host Leon take care of yourselves and good night, good day, wherever you are peace out